under Sublime Text in the Linux version. Preferences are under Preferences. And the thing to look at that's most, most educational is Settings Default. Can you read that? It's a little fuzzy, but it's alright. Settings Default shows all of the settings and what they're currently set to which you don't edit in this file. You override by taking just the ones that you care about and setting them in settings user, which I'm going to show you in this. Preferences, settings user. See, I don't have very many. I just have a few. And they're big. This is like uh, JSON structure? It is exactly JSON. Um, and this is important, this ignored packages vintage. I'm going to talk about vintage in a little bit, but right now we're going to ignore it. One thing that you will see in the preferences is the color scheme. Which for me is idle. <clears throat> and if I look here, preferences, user, blackboard. And that's open to tabs, right? You got three tabs open. I have three tabs open. all settings for this application are JSON files that are stored in the right place. I'm not sure exactly what the right place is. It's in, it's in .config sublime text 3 packages user preferences .sublime settings. So inside .config. In uh, the Mac version, I don't know how many of you use Macs, probably zero. You can see where it lives with this it's in application support. Now in that same place where I keep my preferences, that's the user preferences, I also have Ruby, Python, PHP, JavaScript, and Lua. And they just give my personal preferences for profile. There's built-in preferences, and I'm overriding those. Um, the built-in preferences are tab, translate tabs to spaces is false. So always use tabs if you type tabs. And tab size equals eight, I think. Wow. Might be four. It might be eight. A lot of people like eight. Um, what's the default? I think eight is the default, like the DI at a command line. Yeah. Once you have this set of files, your preference files, you can actually drag these. Well, I, I don't know if I can drag and drop between. Um, machines, but um, you can drag and drop them between machine installations so you have the same files in the same places, give you the exact same preferences. So all your machines will look alike, your Windows machine will act exactly like your Mac, will act exactly like your Ubuntu setup. Those files you've created, those are your, your uh, like little profiles for each of those languages? Yeah, for each of the, for, when you get a file that has the extension that means that language, those are the settings it's automatically going to obey. So there's a ton of keyboard shortcuts 
none of which I use. <laughs> I, am, I am just an ordinary human being. I'm not a super editor. I, I just type and, and pick menu items. Uh, but I have listed here a um, Sublime Keyboard short Cheat Sheet that will teach you all of the commands that you need to know. On the three different platforms. On the three different platforms. Yeah. The command Crap key is the command key. The key. Looking thing? Yeah, the cloverleaf is the command key. Uh, command K, command B. That's what I was looking for. Sorry, right. Emacs. Yeah, it sure does. Like two keys to do one thing. Keys. Yeah. Alright, so now, first of all, if you're an Emacs user, does anybody here an Emacs user? Wow. Nobody hey, admitted. Fantastic. If you're an Emacs user, I would say you don't need to listen to this presentation because there's nothing I can say to make you switch. But if you're a Vim user, uh, it turns out that um, Sublime Text has Vim emulation that lets you work with, with Vim keys. So, <coughs> to get that, right here I'm going to comment out, ignore vintage. Vintage is the Vim thing. Now, so you it notice just, it, it doesn't load that module when you boot it up. Is that what it actually is dynamic. It knows not to load it immediately. So if you notice, once I commented that out, I hit save, now it says insert mode down there. And if I hit escape, then I'm in command mode. And if I hit two up, it goes up two lines. <coughs> if I hit 3D space, so it acts exactly like them. I thought you just commented out with Vim. No, you just commented out with Vim. Vim. Oh, the ignoring of Vim. Yeah, it's double negative. Yeah, great. I'm going to turn it off because it's very destructive to me. And insert mode went away. So is Vim emulation the, the default in it then? It turns out that. Um, Vim, ignored packages is, is the default. If I bring up preferences, settings default, find ignored packages, yeah. it, it, it ignores it's already ignoring vintage. vintage by default. Yeah. I just double that in my, my local user preps. Now there is a significantly better Vim emulation module called Vintageous. <laughs> and uh, I have listed the... Um, oh yeah, I see it there. Yeah. I've listed the, the URL to, to go to it. I'm not going to install it right now. It does not work on Mac. It only works on Windows and, uh, and uh, Linux. But it works really well on Windows and Linux. People love it. And you have to start by disabling the vintage mode. Thanks, thanks. The I'm most sorry, important what, what thing. What does Vintageous mode do? It's Vim emulation. When you're in insert mode, I believe, when you're in insert mode in, in vintage mode, uh, it's all native using uh, Sublime Text natural, natural keys. It's only command mode that's, that's really emulated um, and getting into insert mode. That would make sense. Yeah. And I showed you how to disable vintage mode, which is how it starts. Um, but one of the most important things you can do 
um, is you can install package control. Package control is how you install third party packages. Um, the whole bulk of Sublime Text is programmable in Python. It has a Python uh, com command line. Um, it can execute Python in place um, and it installs Python packages. And to get access to this made up package control thing, um, see that was fast, what's going on? And then there's a little tab controller here if you want to install Sublime Text 2 or Sublime Text 3. But you just copy this whole thing. And then Type it into the, the console. Whoa, what? No. <laughs> You're validating that one. This is going to be depressing to me. Got percent S instead of percent S. <laughs> well, no, that's, the, that's in the code. Well, that's the code you're trying to copy. Curly wouldn't have that problem. <laughs> 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 